Hello guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. Jay Helmsing here coming at you with another review. This time on the Jonic TP9SF. This is the full-size duty model. This one is loaned to me by my good friend Roger, so I appreciate that, Roger. I will be giving you a good shakedown on this here in just a few moments. Just for some information, this is going to be the 1 Series uh, pistol here. And if you have looked at this, uh, you guys know probably the Jonic guns uh, are fairly ch fairly cheap, especially for what you get. And they also offer this 1 Series, which is actually a stripped down version. So as far as the accoutrement goes, uh, there's nothing in here is form fitted. You know, it's just a plain old case. Uh, they've cut some corners here and there. They give you one back strap. They give you this kind of cheap looking little uh, trigger lock thing here. And that's pretty much all you get. You get one magazine in this case. So by removing some of those little odds and ends, they have dropped the price even further. Uh, these can be found anywhere from 250 to 300, usually typical market value uh, for this gun. And for what you pay, it is a tremendous value. Uh, so we'll get into the pros and cons in just a few moments. But first, uh, my thoughts on this weapon here. Um, before we go much further, I will tell you uh, the owner did buy a second magazine. They paid for this themselves. So I have two different magazines here I've been testing this with. Um, jumping right into it, uh, let's start, I guess, with a big elephant in the room here. This gun is made proudly in Turkey. Uh, and for some of you, uh, I don't like to get into political stuff. I don't get to like to get into the, uh, the ins and outs of where stuff is made and all that kind of stuff. Uh, some of you may be aware uh, we are on some kind of interesting grounds right now with Turkey um, as far as the defense side of things goes. So... Um, Long story short, they have acquired Russian defense uh, systems, Russian missiles, and uh, they were asked not to do so. They did that anyway, so that's kind of uh, not, not such a good thing as far as the you know, uh, relationship goes there. Uh, furthermore, they're looking at doing military operations on the Kurds, which are funded by the U.S., so again, not to get into too much of the political turmoil. The reason I point this out is that I kind of hold my breath that this is a Turkish gun, so I don't know exactly where that's going, if we will see any import uh, you know, issues there, if we'll see any embargoes, if Turkey just pulls out and says, hey, we're not selling to the U.S. anymore. I don't know where that's going to go, but I do feel like it is worth pointing out, uh, just to know that that relationship there at least is on a little bit of uh, strained ground at this point, and that did kind of influence uh, my approach to this pistol, so just to be completely honest with you about that. Um, let's tell you, let's give you a real quick rundown for those of you who like the short and sweet part of this. Now this gun has been tested to death and largely people love it. Uh, I did not have any issues with it as far as reliability goes except for one. So and I'll try to show it here. Hopefully it works on camera. You know how that goes. Uh, so if I go to release the magazine here, uh, it does not fall free from this grip. Uh, now that changes if the gun gets hot. So if the gun is hot shooting at the range, it does drop free. However, and on a cold grip, for some reason, it just sticks in there. So we'll try the other magazine because I said that's going to come in here in just a few moments. And we'll see if anything changes there. And the answer is no. So in two magazines, uh, neither one of them dropped free. Now, that is my biggest hang-up with this gun. Um, how do I feel about it? Well, if it was my gun, what I would do is wrap these in some sandpaper and run them up in there doing the old uh, US PSA production trick. And I would just sand the snot out of that mat that. Uh, magwell there and I would make them drop free myself so not a huge issue but it is something that I will come back to later as far as the build quality of this gun um, with that out of the way that's really my biggest complaint the trigger on this thing is fantastic the price point is just dirt cheap I honestly don't know why anyone would buy something like a high point when these are out there I mean really it's just save another fifty dollars seventy five dollars buy a gun like this and be done with it this is a tremendous platform for the price and I really think because of that, it is a great value and a great gun to look at uh, for maybe a beginner or somebody who doesn't want to invest too much in the, into a platform. Uh, this would be great for that. Uh, not to knock it on the competitive circuit because there are people out there just slaying with this gun, Nils being one of them. I mean, he just lays waste to some, you know, five, seven, ten thousand dollar guns with uh, the humble little Jonic here. So, um, We'll get more into that as uh, this unfolds here, but that's kind of my short and sweet of it. Those are the two, the pros and cons, if you will. Not too crazy about where it's made. Don't know what the future of that's going to look like. Mags, at least in this one, don't drop free. Otherwise, it has been very reliable, and it has a fantastic trigger on this gun. 
Okay, let's get into this uh, top to bottom as I like to do. This gun here, no fancy really anything at all. So um, the sights here are going to be Warren tactical sights. They are actual Warren sights. Uh, they do have that kind of scallop cut that Warren is known for. So they did source that, which is kind of a cool little feature. Uh, all black rear, which I really like. Nice deep notch. This is a U-notch back here. No serrations on the rear. The front is just a plain old uh, steel sight. It's just got the little white dot there. No tritium, no fiber optic, anything like that, at least on this gun. Uh, on the top here, you do also have a loaded chamber indicator. Again, I could take it or leave it. It's just kind of one of those doodads that is uh, becoming more and more common. Uh, the slide itself does not have front serrations, uh, but it is, you can manipulate it fairly easily that way. It does have some pretty serviceable rear serrations, much better than you're going to get on the G guns, in my opinion. And um, the grip frame here, we're looking at some pretty basic polymer stuff. Now, I don't like the way the grip frame feels. That is one kind of knock I will give this. Uh, the, it just feels plasticky. It doesn't feel like some of the other grip frames I'm more used to. Uh, that said, there is a nice undercut here, which is uh, you know nice to get your, your hand up in there. It is pretty ergonomic and form-fitting for your hand. And, of course, it does have, have interchangeable back straps. Now, with that said, it's not the most grippy in the world. Uh, if it were me and I shot competition with this, I would definitely be putting some stick on tape or something like that. Uh, the magwell is fairly nicely done. Nice bevel there uh, to get those reloads fairly quickly. However... Uh, as you witnessed before, it does kind of hang up mags, at least on this one, and it seems to be a fairly regular problem with these guns from my research. Um, other than that, the gun just really fits in your hand pretty nicely, points really nicely. Uh, because of the, t the taller height of the sights, and you do have a little bit of a taller, not, not as crazy as some, but a little bit of a higher stack height here, uh, or bore axis, um, they, the sights do just kind of sit on top there, and it, it does take just a little bit of getting used to because you're not really looking down into the gun like you are on some others. It uh, feels a little bit tall in the hand, but that is easily overcome. Uh, some of the things I don't really care for here, uh, this slide release or slide catch, I use it as a slide release. Uh, it is fairly nicely done, but it is just cheap feeling. It is just stamped steel, uh, nothing rolled there, not even a whole lot of good texture on it. Uh, I don't like the way that feels. Um, the trigger itself is nicely done. The actual safety does reset, does work, and it does recess completely into the, the gun itself, so that's very nice to see. Um, the mag release is metal, and that is kind of nicely done there, so nice and out of the way. It does protect itself, and it is easy to manipulate and easy to use uh, for your common shooters. Uh, let's get into the trigger next. I usually save this for last, but with this gun here... I definitely think it's worth talking about. Uh, before I do so, show you guys the back here. We're talking about this uh, loaded chain or loaded striker, I should say, co cocked striker indicator back there. So uh, you're going to see it on some guns. Now it does not protrude out like some of the other guns do to show you uh, that your your trigger is being pulled. I think that's kind of a neat feature some of those guns have. Uh, this one just works like the VP9. It just drops out of sight uh, when it goes off, so you can tell if it's got a cocked striker or not. Um, not a big deal, but you know, it's, uh, it is a feature, I guess, right? So, uh, trigger on this gun is fantastic. Just directly out of the box, I was able to shoot this gun very well, very quickly. Um, it has a very PPQ feel to it. However, the ergonomics, at least in my hand, are a tad bit better than I got on the PPQ. Uh, reset is phenomenally short, very positive, nice audible and tactile reset. Um, and again, it's got a nice, so well, let's, let's walk completely through this here. There's a lot of dead space here where it's taking those safeties off, so you just go ahead and sweep back through that, uh, that madness there. You're going to get to a wall like you do on all these striker-fired guns. Now that wall is where you're going to want to stage at, and then just a little bit of pressure and it's going to break right off that wall. So unlike some of the newer guns, it's not going to go through the wall and then break. It breaks directly off the wall, much like an MMP or a PPQ or something like that does. Uh, very nice light trigger. Very easy to shoot. Very easy to shoot accurately. Uh, reset is just stellar on this gun. Uh, very short, very tactile. You can shoot this gun very, very quickly, uh, and it really needs nothing done to the trigger. It's just fantastic. So awesome, awesome trigger, especially for the price point. Makes it very difficult to pass up. Uh, let's field strip this bad boy next. You're going to see uh, a lot of cuts in here, and some of these are not very well finished cuts. Um, 
that's kind of my, my other gripe, I guess I would say, is that you, it does kind of show that it is a low dollar pistol, uh, at least in my sample here. Um, so some of the things, you know, accuracy has been great with it, so it's nothing that's really going to affect function or form or anything. Um, that was me just ripping the barrel out of there because it is a very tight fit. Uh, machining's not not stellar on the inside. Coatings don't look stellar. I don't know how they're going to hold up. Um, got a lot of kind of meat and, and cutouts and whatnot taken out of this gun here, uh, right up there in the slide, which makes it fairly light. But it does it kind of looks a little unfinished in certain areas. Uh, the barrel is nicely done. It's got nice rifling. It it is perfectly shaped. Uh, the only thing I don't like is just it's a flush cut up here, so you do have those flat shoulders, those square shoulders. They just kind of look unfinished when the gun is put together. But again, that is a cost cost saving measure. So if you're not paying much, you got to expect some things like this. Um, some neat things though are you know it does have a, an all metal guide rod, and that is a thick all metal guide rod, so that is not going to you know burn out or wear out or whatever you want to do if you want to torture test this. Um, comes apart like a Glock, goes together like a Glock. Um, the locking lugs are pretty good on this gun. Um, and again, some of these, these things, just kind of the stamping and stuff, the, uh, the controls, not too big of a fan on. Uh, but other than that, I mean, like I say, for the price point, uh, it is a tough, tough gun to pass up. Um, got her back together here. And um, we'll kind of give you a quick rundown here in a minute as far as what I think overall, if I would recommend this gun or not. Um, I think that if you're in the market for your first gun, this would be a very difficult one to pass up. The manual of arms on this gun, the way it functions, is going to be very similar to all your other striker fired guns. It has got a fantastic trigger which may ruin you if you have to go to like a stock block or something if you're used to this very nice light trigger. Um, there are some parts out there you can add on to these. No sweat, no problem. You can add a trigger in, a flat trigger if you want. Some other doodads are out there for it. Uh, sights I really like. Um, they are kind of on a low budget end, but they are very, very functional and very nice compared to what you get, especially at this price point. I really don't have a whole lot of negatives for this gun. Um, it's been a great shooter. We'll sh so show some shooting footage. Um, other than that, I don't really have a whole lot to knock it about. Uh, like I say, just kind of beware with uh, the importation and stuff like that. That may change. It may not. Um, it may stay the same. They may build a factory in the U.S. I have no idea. Uh, but at this point, these are made in Turkey, and um, who knows what that's going to turn into uh, before long. But other than that, uh, would I carry this gun? The answer is probably, at least for me, I'd have to say no. I just don't have enough faith in the platform yet. Uh, I did put about 500 rounds through it, and it has been perfectly fine so far. Uh, but I would probably stick with something that's a little more tested at this point. Uh, I would definitely take it to the range. I would target shoot with it. I would take it out. I would use it for probably for home defense if I needed to. It would be a great first gun. Um, but that is my take on the TP9SF, a very intriguing gun, very uh, interesting gun, and definitely one you should not bypass if you're in the market for pretty awesome, great triggered, cheap gun. Let's cut to some shooting footage.
All right, guys, as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I will be posting more of these videos as I am able to do so. As most of you know, my, my videos have been demonetized uh, along with several others. Uh, so slowly but surely, the powers that be are trying to push our community to the wayside uh, and keep us out of the limelight. Um, if, what's that mean for me? You know, I've had some questions. I'm still going to make these videos as I have time to do so. Now, obviously, without any incentive coming in to do them, it's going to be at my leisure. Uh, but I do have several vid several videos to make, several different gun reviews to uh, crank out for you guys. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, look forward to more of these coming out. Uh, as always, you know, we are uh, in in desperate need of uh, you know those. Um, those thinkers out there, the ones that are ambassadors to our sport or ambassadors to our lifestyle that are willing to, uh, you know, get out there and set a good example and be a positive image for our community. Uh, so I can encourage you to continue to do that, uh, continue to learn as much as you can, continue to get out to the range and practice your craft, and uh, continue to fight to maintain our rights uh, because they are, as you know, under fire. Um, in my opinion, several misguided people believe that removing firearms in general from the largely law-abiding populace is going to somehow solve these uh, terrible situations that we have going on out there. And um, I think most of you who are probably watching agree with me in saying that that is most likely not going to be the case. It's probably only going to make more of a victim-rich environment. So uh, continue to fight the good fight and continue to... Tune in, like, subscribe if you will, comment below. I will continue to get back at you guys. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great day.